So what are we doing today? Today, I'm walking around inspecting my yard because we're about to put pre-emergent out. Now Jacob is gonna come out here tomorrow and we're gonna apply pre-emergent to the rest of the lawns because I had a little bit of a window the other day, so I came out and did my yard with the granular pre-emergent. We have treated for any of the weeds and the weeds are starting to die and turn yellow. But I also have to go over here, we have to get pre-emergent out on the world's worst, uh, on test and over on barbs. So let's see if we can go look at that real quick. So one of the things I haven't done is I really haven't treated Barb's yard for much of anything as far as weeds go. So we've got henbit, we've got a little bit of poana. She doesn't have much, but it's still enough to do, enough to treat. So I still need to come over here and spray this to kill it for weeds and put out the granular pre-emergent both. So we're gonna treat this one. We're gonna go across the street. We'll treat the world's worst. All right, so this is, uh, this is that test plot we did last year. And you can see that um, a lot of this has been taken over by Bermuda, but I'm gonna have to come back here and I'm gonna have to seed this. I'm gonna have to seed this with Bermuda. So if I plan to do any Bermuda seed back here, I really only, I'm not gonna do the double treatment. I'm only gonna do the single treatment. Uh, because I want the pre-emergent to wear off in about three months, which is about the time that I want to come back and I want to seed this area, probably with some blackjack or some Yukon. Um, we did some seeding back here the other, uh, last year and it took over pretty much, but there's some dead areas. This has a huge amount of grub damage over here, so we're going to play with this too. But we got to get pre-emergent down on this and on the world's worst we got to do pre-emergent on all those lawns and it's going to be the granular is what we're going to do first but the main thing i want to do today is i want to go over the rules for pre-emergent especially this granular stuff so let's go over here and let's go in the back and let's talk about the rules okay so first of all doc what's up with the cowboy hat <laughs> true story uh, my granddaughter had her two-year-old birthday and she had kind of a ranch party with a petting zoo and no one was wearing the little hats and scarves and badges that she brought along so I put them on of course my wife says you're not gonna wear that home are you and I said yeah I'm gonna wear it all the way home and I'm gonna shoot a video with it <laughs> gotta be one of my posse back there a new sheriff in town a new sheriff in town so, uh, better listen to what I gotta say. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> you get to a point you just don't care anymore in life. Hey guys, so today is a pre-emergent video and this is kind of the rules and guidelines that you wanna use when doing your pre-emergent. We've done a lot of talk about the oversaturation of these soils and when not to apply it. So let's talk about what to apply, how we're gonna apply it, and some tips for you. Now Jacob's coming out tomorrow, and he's gonna be applying pre-emergent to barbs, the world's worst, and the lot across the street. I had a small window, and so I applied it on my lawn about three or four days ago. I went ahead and put my pre-emergent out, granular. But I'm gonna go through the steps. Now, real important before we start, in the description below, there's gonna be a link. There's always one link that takes you over to a web to our web page on our website and all this information is going to be there all these rules links to the exact products that you need um, even a zone map i'll put up a temperature map for germination dates where you need to be before that a link to the bermuda lawn guide remember the bermuda lawn guide was published this year by us it took us six months to develop it it walks you all the way through the year on everything that you any questions you might have about your lawn so make sure you go there and the Bermuda Lawn Guide link will be there as well too. Click that subscribe button because today over at the shop we got in our new McLean reel mower. I'll be doing a video on that. Um, later this week I'll be doing hopefully humichar, <laughs> knock on wood, 
Hopefully Humichar will pop up on Amazon. It's sitting at one of their warehouses waiting to be checked in, by the way. Hopefully that'll pop up on Amazon and then we can go ahead and do the jump start program. And the jump start program is sort of that soil conditioning quick start program for your lawn. That is real important, but we need the Humichar to really get that done. So hopefully that'll, uh, that'll be up on Amazon soon. Okay, so rule number one when it comes to pre-emergent. Pre-emergent is the most important thing I do in my lawn care program. <laughs> I just have to say that. Getting out a real good treatment in the spring and doing the split treatment we do in the Bermuda Lawn Guide prevents me from having to put anything negative on my lawn in the future. So in the summertime when it's hot, I don't have to treat for weeds. I just don't have to worry about any weeds. I don't have to worry about any crabgrass because I'm very, very strict on how I put my pre-emergent out and I do that split treatment, a granular and then a liquid. I'm telling you, if I could only do one thing to my lawn this year, I would probably be pre-emergent. <laughs> that, that's it. That's how important it is. So I want you to remember that. Do not skip your spring, uh, late winter, early spring pre-emergent program. That's rule number one. Rule number two, the reason why we do pre-emergence is because, especially for weeds that are really tough to kill, like uh, Dallas grass and goose grass and crab grass and these these weeds that the only way to kill them is to sort of damage our Bermuda grass with chemicals that are harmful to our Bermuda. So rule number two is they will help prevent those really tough weeds that we just can't kill with a simple little spray. Rule number three, don't skimp on your pre-emergence. Put out the right amount. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you to actually err on the side of being a little bit heavy with your pre-emergence. Uh, even if you want to do a split up your granular or do a light coat and a light coat, maybe look for two windows. But I'm telling you, do not skimp on your pre-emergence. Put them out at the heavier settings on the bags that you read your label. Read your label and determine what you need to do. But make sure you put out in the spring. Is really Fall, I really don't care about it. I got winter coming up. My lawn's going to go dormant. But in the spring, we really want to make sure we get a lot of pre-emergent down on our grass. So put down the right amount. Rule number four is the split treatment. We always start off with a granular first because granulars do not have any post-killing effects. They are strictly a pre-emergent. Granulars have a tendency to stay in the soils longer. They grab into the soils. So rule number four is use the split treatment, which is now early. We'd put down a nice strong coat of granular pre-emergent. And then we're going to wait about four to six weeks and we're going to come out with a liquid pre-emergent that's listed on the page below. And that has both pre and post killing. So if any little crabgrass germinates, happens to germinate and get by that barrier, the spray that we're going to use also will kill the little baby, the little small crabgrass. So always use that split treatment. Granular first, then switch over to the spray. Rule number five. Always use a granular pre-emergent that is in the DG particle formula. I can't stress that enough. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about putting a sugar cube on your lawn. That sugar cube is just going to melt in that one spot. Now think about sprinkling sugar all over that area and you get a nice even coat. And that's what the DG does. Dispersible granules, when water touches them, they disperse out and you get a real nice thousands and thousands of subparticles go out. So always use, never use a, a pre-emergent that is a granule that just sits there and melts because it's going to melt and melt and melt and melt. Use the DG which is going to spread and spread and spread. So always use, and that's on the page below in the description below, I link to the DG formula. We always want to use a DG granular pre-emergent. Rule number six. This was part of our last video. We talked about saturated soils. You do, you want to have a window, a window where there's three, four, five days where there's no rain and that upper layer of soil is going to dry out. I want to see a nice half to one inch of dry soil when we put out our pre-emergence. If we put a pre-emergent out on saturated soil, it's just like a saturated sponge, nothing else is going to be absorbed. So we put it out on a dry soil and then we can either water it or let the rains water it in. And what's the first thing that's going to happen? The DG particle is going to explode, it's going to suck into the soil, 
And even if you have thunderstorms after that, it doesn't matter because it's already in the soil. So wait for that window. And that's what we've been waiting for. As you can see, this is the first sunshine I think I've seen in, I don't know how many days. It's finally coming out. It's gonna dry out these soils. That's why we're gonna apply it. Rule number seven, um, I don't worry about natural areas and flower beds. Matter of fact, I encourage you when you're putting out your pre-emergent, I think a lot of people try and avoid them and I want you to actually put your pre-emergent into your flower beds and into your natural areas. It's gonna work just like your lawn. It's gonna stop the weed seeds from germinating. The only time you would not wanna do that is if you're gonna try and plant like flowers from seed obviously, but most people don't do that. Most people, you know, buy small already sprouting flowers and then they plant them in and it's gonna be fine. Uh, plus it's not gonna, if you're putting it on mulch, it's gonna stay in that upper mulch layer. So make sure when you're putting out your pre-emergent, don't be afraid to let it go out and get into natural areas. Make sure it gets up against that fence. So really put it out and, and get 100% coverage. And that's one thing Jacob, uh, never has used a lawn spreader before. So I've been training him and say, having him think and say, dude, when you do this, when you use this spreader, you really have to concentrate. And what are you concentrating? You're making sure that you're not missing areas. You're really watching your lines. You're making sure that that spreader is getting a full coverage. And that's something I really stress with him. So that's, that's kind of my last rule. Howdy, okay, so it's pre-emergent day. Uh, Jacob just pulled up and I'm getting the spreader out and getting some camera equipment out and getting the bags out. Uh, there's a chance of a light rain tonight, but, and I'm okay with that. No severe rain, a 30% chance of some light showers and that'll be fine. The ground hasn't had rain in about 48 hours, but I've got another five days coming up with no rain. So should I wait 24 hours? Maybe so, but I'm okay with it. We need to get this out and there's a lot to do because we got a bunch of stuff to do. So we're gonna get this stuff going. All right, so first off, you need to know your spreader settings. Um, I'm using the Andersons. I'm using the Big Beast, the LCO. There's a link to a really good spreader that's like this. That's a lot less on that webpage. Um, it's about 140 bucks and it's a fantastic spreader. But I've got this one out, so I'm gonna use it. This one, they have a number system. I'm close to a K on this, which is about That'll put one bag at about 5,000 square feet, which is where I want to be with this. So I just need to grab a bag. Make sure your spreader's closed. And then uh, we'll end up putting probably three or four bags into this and get it going. But I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so this is that's what the product looks like right and that's the dg that's the gg particle and that's what you want right there Okay, so Jacob's about to do this pest test patch over here. And what's funny about this test patch is, this was all weeds, 100% weeds, before I took it over. Uh, let me put a picture up of what this looks like, of what this looks like now, because it's dormant. And then let me put a picture up of what it looked like when it was green, which I showed you earlier. And uh, the difference is amazing, but we've gotten most of this whole area here. We've gotten all under control. We've gotten rid of the crabgrass. 
Um, I planted some additional seed that kicked in. There's a couple of weird dip areas back in there. Now, I don't know if it's septic or if it's just grubs, but there's something that kind of destroyed our seed planting back over there. So um, we're gonna put granular pre-emergent down now, but that's it. I'm not gonna double treat this one because I want the pre-emergent to wear off in about 90, 60 to 90 days. In 90 days, uh, when the temperatures start to hit maybe in the 80s, start to touch the 80s, that may be three or four months, that's when you want to plant your Bermuda. So I'll come back here and I'll plant Bermuda uh, probably sometime in June, maybe. Okay, so all the pre-emergent has been put out. We've got all the lawns done with pre-emergents. My lawn has already had the Jumpstart program. So I had some humichar, I was lucky enough to get two test bags of it. And I put down a little bit of correction fertilizer. The next step for me is to beat all of you to Amazon to order humichar because everyone's going to want it. And I'll be putting humichar on Barb's lawn and on those lawns as well too. And then maybe a little bit of 10, 10, 10. Now remember, humichar is part of a soil enhancement program. It allows you to use less fertilizer. It makes your soil healthy. And we're going to be putting a lot of humichar down this year along with organic matter. We'll cover that in upcoming videos. So make sure you subscribe. One of the things I want you to do is I want you to really understand how we're using this biochar and also mixing it in with, ooh, it's windy, mixing it in with um, cheap organic matter. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using less and less fertilizer. Now the fertilizer we're gonna be using is PGF Complete. That's the only fertilizer I use from now on on all the lawns, PGF Complete. So when it comes time to fertilize this spring, which is probably going to be once the temperatures go up and the grass turns green, PGF Complete is the only fertilizer we'll be using. Then we'll be putting humichar down along with organic matter. And we can do that humichar and organic matter, especially in the heat of the summer. And we're going to have an absolutely gorgeous lawn. Again, we've got new reel mowers coming. We'll be doing videos on those. We've got all kinds of stuff. We'll be talking about grub control. We'll be talking about fungus control. So click that subscribe button and, uh, Talk to you later. Doc.